uh, I thank the Lord again for the opportunity to serve Him uh, through preaching the Word of God. And sa ating series po ngayon, uh, when we are hurt, where is God in that part of our life? Now we will talk about uh, Hannah's desperation because God listens to our desperate plea. Well, I remember when I was still in high school. We went swimming with the barkada. And you know, alam nyo naman, pagka barkada, very playful. So we saw one boat um, na medyo malayo sa shore. So trip ng mga barkada, puntahan natin. So langoy kami, papunta doon, yun. Naglaro-laro doon, habang nandoon. And then, I know how to swim. But I have this parang fear na pagka magsisiuwian na lahat, may iwan ako. So what I did is I uh, sneaked out, nauna akong lumangoy pa uwi. Ang problema, I don't know how to swim with my eyes open. So wala akong goggles, wala. So yon, I just swim, I just swam doon, dire-diretsyo. But because I do not know where I am going, yeah, para sa akin, so madilim, and I got tired. And uh, almost uh, yung heart ko na, sa takot, mas lalo kong kinabahan. And then, I, naka, nainom ko na yung tubig dagat, sabi ko maalat talaga. Tapos kinabahan ako, takot na ako, and talagang I almost gave up. I, I, I literally gave up. Sabi ko, Lord, hindi ko na kaya. Hindi ko alam kung saan ito, hanggang saan pa ako lalangoy. Uh, wala akong nakikita. So, yon no? I, I, I plead to God for a help. Pero, wala, no? I, I give up. Parang free flow. Binitawang ko yung paglangoy. Parang hayaan ko na lang. Nakakainom na ko ng tubig, diretsyo. Pagbaba, I felt the sand in my uh, feet. Eh, kuy, konti lang. Parang malapit lang, mababaw na lang. So, paddle ulit, paddle. Hanggang sa, tina- yung hindi ko na talaga kaya, I stood up and the water just my, uh, under my chin. Parang okay na. So nakatingkaya daw ganon. So parang yun pala because I, instead of uh, swimming uh, towards the shore, parang pa sideways. Kaya palang mas malayo na mahirap. And then as I was, ano, uh, uh, di ba, kinabahan ako, nag, nag, ano ko, naghahabol ako ng aking hininga, uh, grabe ang struggle ko. Eh. But I thank the Lord. Lumapit ako doon sa may bag namin, kuha ako ng towel. Na, yung mga barkada ko doon pa rin. And then, hindi lang nagtagal, na, hindi lang hanggang doon. In, in a few seconds, biglang may nalaglag na niyog sa tabi mismo ng pa ako. So, nung umakit ako, ay tininang ko yung taas. Sabi ko, nasa tapat lang kami ng niyog. And there, I remember that I was crying to the Lord and thanking God for saving me twice. And I realized ngayon, ng yung experience ko, no wonder I am afraid of dagat. Not because I don't know how to swim. I, I swim kasi nag, uh, sumasali ko ng competition sa high school, uh, intramurals. But I am afraid of what will happen to me doon. Pag pool, okay lang kasi alam ko, limited. May square, ganyan. Yung dagat, takot talaga ako. And it is because I swam with a closed eyes I cannot see anything ahead of me or what's inside my, ano, kung anong meron doon. And I realized that in our experiences in life, there are many dark tunnels which we do not know where's the end or where, where there is a cave na we don't see any boundaries. Or maybe if we could see in our deepest heart, there are many unending problems in life. Struggles, pains from both inward and outward factors. Hannah, the mother of Samuel, was a great story of encouragement. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, Elkanah, yung papa ni Samuel, meron siyang dalawang wives. Si Penina, kung saan meron siyang mga anak. And Hannah, na pinakamamahal niya, pero wala silang anak. Uh, the scripture says, uh, the Lord closed her womb. Well, no question how Elkanah loved Hannah, but due to her uh, barrenness, 
nagkakaroon si Hana ng ano parang uh, self pity uh, hindi niya nakikita yung worth niya sa buhay niya kasi during that time ang worth ng isang babae merong anak okay much more yung kanyang insecurities was added by mockery and intimidation from Penina yung other wife na may anak but one notable thing Hana did was her outburst of emotion and praying to God in desperation. Take note, ang nakita ko dito, hindi, wala ang account sa Samuel kung gaano ka desperate si Hannah. In first chapter ng first Samuel, wala, walang ano doon, walang, hindi mo makikita yung weight ng, ng desperation ni Hannah. But in, in, in chapter 2, Hannah prayed with thanksgiving to the Lord. Doon sa binasa natin, babasahin natin na pagpapasalamat niya sa Panginoon, doon natin makikita yung intensity ng kanyang problema kung ka, paano siya nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon. So, we will look at how Hannah thanked the Lord and how God uh, provided, paved way for her to become victorious sa pamamagitan niya kanyang pagpapasalamat. Take note, she prayed to God to help her out of her situation. And he, she didn't pray against her enemies. Isipin nyo ha, nag-pray siya dahil sa situation niya. Minsan, sa buhay ng tao, pagka may kaaway ka, ang ipagpipray mo, Lord, anuhin mo nga siya, Lord, i-rebuke mo siya, ganyan. We, point, she, she, we should point it out, di ba? Pero kay Hannah, hindi eh. She prayed out for her situation. Hindi yung kung sino ang nagmak sa kanya, hindi yung kaaway niya na si Penena. So this morning, our main idea is this. We can know the depth of Hannah's desperation by understanding her thanksgiving prayer when God heard her plea and answered them. So, doon tayo mag-base ngayon. Okay po? Sige. So, in, in first point, no? uh, verses 1 and 2, when Hannah was at her weakest, God was her strength. In verses 1 and 2, it says, At that time, Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord, in whom... Are, uh, in whom my horn is exalted. My mouth speaks boldly against my enemies, for I rejoice in your salvation. There is no one holy like the Lord. Indeed, there is no one besides you. And there is no rock like our God. We can see here that there is a clear evidence of rivalry between Hannah and Penina. Hannah rejoices in the Lord, the God who helped her achieve her last long cry. Why can I say that Hannah was at her weakest because of the two things she declared to God when she thanked the Lord. Number one, yung sinabi niyang, in whom my horn is exalted, and the other one is yung sadulo, and there is no rock like our God. Horn, especially as lifted up or as of a lordly animal denoting increase of might and dignity. Horns used by animals for defense and offense, which symbolizes strength. So, if it is used, ibig sabihin, weak, nag, nagkaroon ng weakness or weak si Hannah that time. She was at her weakest point because she declared that God was her strength. That it means on her weakest moment, God was her strength to continue and persevere, persevere in faith and hope. And she spoke of it that God has come to her rescue because God answered her prayers. Ang horn, uh, pinakamahalaga yan sa mga horned animals. Uh, it, it uses both for defense and offense. So when she was at her weakest, wala siyang ibang strength kung hindi ang Panginoon who came to her rescue. And then another thing is this, no rock like our God. Rock means a support and defense of his people. Uh, remember, when there is a mud around, wala kang ibang pagpapatungan kung hindi yung bato. Di ba po? It, it, it helps us to elevate from what is muddy down there. So, it seems that Hannah found a refuge, a tower uh, on God. It means that after how Penina mistreated her and looked down on her, she put her hope in God. That hope gave her strength to lay to God her weakest moment in life. That she did not use her strength, your, her remaining strength, yung 
yung naging weak, uh, I mean, uh, when Hannah was at her weakest, yung extra strength niya, hindi niya ginamit para awayin si Penina. Ginamit niya yon para ipanalangin yung kanyang sitwasyon sa Panginoon. There, she pled, no, kaya nga nakita ni Eli, yung priest during that time, kung paano siya uh, umiyak, paano siya naghinagpis. So, she used her strength. It was then that God strengthened her with hope. God acted on her behalf. That God came to her defense by providing what her enemy was bragging of, of which she had none, and shaming what her enemy was boasting. Sa buhay natin, marami tayong, marami tayong mga uncertainties. Ang dami natin mga pinagdadaanan. And most of the time, our responses are hitting it, are hitting it head on. Yung, you will try to strive to get over, overcome doon sa situation. Yun pala, yung kay Hannah, ang ginawa niya, yung remaining strength, niluhod niya sa Panginoon. Doon niya nilabas lahat. Hindi niya pinagpray yung kanyang kaaway, kung hindi ang pinagpray niya yung kanyang situation. Our principle here is this. Our hope in God will motivate us to keep us moving. It means, it gives us an inner strength. Iba ang krisyano pagka may problema. Pare-pareho tayo nagkakaproblema, lahat ng tao sa mundo, pero pagka ang krisyano may problema, medyo okay. I remember during my college days, again, sinasabi ko sa inyo, aminin ko din naman, uh, talagang nahihirapan ako sa math. And then, for three semesters, Talagang yung math one pa lang yun. No? Tatawanan lang ako ni Eds nito. Math one pa lang, basic no? algebra, talagang bumabagsak ako. Pero yung, dahil scholar ako ng university, I need to maintain a grade. Or else, talagang malalaglag ako sa scholarship. Meron akong kasamahan, kaklasiko, na pareho kami, pero siya iba ang response. Yun pala ay krisyano siya mananampalataya. Na sabi ko, bakit parang pareho naman tayong bumagsak? Pareho naman tayo nasa situation. Pero bakit ikaw, parang iba ang, ang, ang carry mo doon sa problema. And then, he shared to me about, yeah, yung gift of uh, having hope in God. Alam naman ng Diyos yan, nag-try naman ako na ganyan. So, makikitaan yung difference how one handled each other's problems. One thing is certain, if God is our hope, there is an inner strength that will strive us to move forward. Number two, when Hannah was provoked, God was her voice. So, hindi lang uh, when Hannah was at her weakest, nagiging strength niya si God. Kung hindi, ito din. When Hannah was provoked, verbally, God was her voice. In verse 3, ang sabi ng passage, Do not boast so proudly or let arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God who knows and by Him actions were weighed. So, ibig sabihin, when Hannah prayed it to the Lord na uh, yung kaaway ko dapat hindi pala magyabang. So, ibig sabihin, she experienced a verbal demeanor. In 1 Samuel 1.6, uh, sabi ng salita ng Panginoon in English Standard Version, and her rival, si Penina, used to provoke her grievously to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. In Berean Standard Bible, sabi dito, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival would provoke her and taunt her viciously. So, ibig sabihin, may verbal, ano, uh, pangungut siya, no, makiri doon kay Hannah. Ah, wala kang anak, maganyan. So, it adds up to her, yung struggle niya. So, kasama doon sa pinapanalangin niya, yung verbal mga inflictions na yon. Do not boast so proudly or let arrogance come from your mouth, as the scripture says. This line denotes that Hannah received a verbal demeanor that somehow added to her sorrow. But instead of answering her back, she kept her voice only for pouring out to God in agony. She did not respond and she did not refute. Out of Penina's boasting, Hannah kept her voice humbled in front of God. Yung tipong, alam mong, typical kasi pagka ikaw ay inaaway, hindi pwede hindi ka sasagot. Sa tundon, ako, ilang beses na kami nakarinig, pagka minura mo ako, mumurahin din kita. 
Pagka ganito, gagantihin kita. Gagantihan kita. But the principle that I would like to leave here is this. There is wisdom in silence. Sometimes, kung tahimik ka lang, wala palang problema, hindi ka magkakasala. The fewer we talk, the lesser we sin. So if we hear anything against uh, the outside world that uh, somehow uh, nagbibigay sa atin ng uh, stress, nagbibigay sa atin ng negative uh, thoughts and emotions, pour it all out to God because God will answer them back. This is what Hannah did. After siyang inaaway ni Penina, tahimik siya, but instead of answering back, he used her voice uh, to plead to the Lord. And God became her voice. Number three, which I will somehow a little time na mag-spend ako dito. When Hannah was emptied, God was her source. In verses 4 to 8, the passage says, The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble are equipped with strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for food, but the starving hunger no more. The barren woman gives birth to seven, but she who has many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and gives life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and He exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sets them among princes and bestows on them a throne of honor. If we could remember, if we could uh, review yung ver- uh, previous verses, through God's attributes such as holiness, yung strength, yung rock, yung knowledge ng Panginoon, yung discernment ng Panginoon, and in view of His action toward both the ungodly and the godly in these verses, so verses 4 to 8, the Lord demonstrates His awesome sovereignty in human affairs. Especially pointed is Hannah's reference to herself and Penina respectively. Sabi ng verse 5, The well-fed hire themselves out for food, but the starving hunger no more. The barren woman, refers to her, gives birth to seven, but she who has many sons, refers to Penina, pines away. Ibig sabihin, between the two na nagkaroon ng anak, yung anak ni Hana ni lift up ng Panginoon. Yung mga anak na, ni Penena na yung pinagyayabang niya, yun yung nag-fade away. Ibig sabihin si Samuel was uh, gifted to the Lord and uh, alam natin ang kwento ni Samuel. So, tinaas ng Panginoon. But significantly, there are evidence, evidences here that are found in the prayer of Hana as how God intervened in human affairs. Ang katotohanan, mga kapatid, God can intervene in our earthly situations. Physical, uh, personal ang ating Diyos. So pwede niyang pakialaman kung ano ang mga nangyayari sa atin dito sa mundong ibabaw. And He is real. So, tingnan natin sa verse 4. Verse 4, taas po. Yan. The bows of the mighty are broken. When I studied about the, the, itong mga archers, hindi pala yung, ang, ang pinagyayabang niya ay yung, hindi yung arrow, kung hindi yung bow. There are several bows uh, na pwede pang long, long range at saka short range. Meron din pang malakas, uh, pang, pang yung mabagal pero penetrating. So ang pinagyayabang ng mga archers are how the bow was designed perfectly. So dito, binanggit dito, the bows of the mighty are broken. So ibig sabihin, God can break any pride. No wonder, for, since the Old Testament hanggang New Testament, di ba, ang binabanggit palagi, God uh, uh, mocks the proud, uh, yung mga mockers, i, ano ng Panginoon, i-pull down, but gives grace to the humble. Itataas ng Panginoon. God can intervene. So yung mga uh, pag meron ng mapagmataas, kayang i-pull down yan ng Panginoon. Kung tayo, magmi-maintain tayo doon sa, hayaan na natin kung anong meron tayo. God can do anything uh, on His capacity, on His powerful hands para ipagtanggol tayo. So when Anna 
was empty, well, when, when someone was so proud against her, ang Panginoon mismo ang nagbiyak kay Penina. Siya ang nagbreak. Another one, uh, but, uh, sa verse 5, uh, satisfying of the hungry, but the starving hunger no more. It means God can satisfy and gives contentment. Kasi, Merong mga bagay dito sa mundo na, di ba, the more you you uh, you run after it, the more na itong nawawala. No wonder Jesus said, di ba, the one who, uh, yung inahabol niya yung kanyang buhay, the more itong mawawala. So, uh, as we walk in the highways and byways of life, how can contented are we? Because God can provide and gives contentment. So, ang prayer natin is, Lord, give me a heart of contentment. Hannah was contented actually. No, but she just poured out her heart to have a, a, a son. Ang sabi nga ni Elkanah doon sa chapter 1, am I not more than to you than having a child? Kung baga, between the, the asawa, pinakamamahal ni Elkanah si Hannah. So, contento na, da, contento na si Hannah doon, but still, she poured out her heart. So, God can satisfy and give us contentment sa mundo natin. Kahit anong habol natin, pag hindi tayo satisfied, hindi tayo masasatisfy. When we talk about resources, ang question palagi doon, what is enough? Kailan tayo hinto? Hindi tayo may hinto, hindi tayo makukontento. Ang sabi nga nila doon, yung discontentment is like a black hole na walang ending. As long as you have this kind of heart and attitude, you will, uh, you will, mag, mag, ano, mag, ano tawag yan? Maglulong ka. Kahit ano na gagawin natin until we compromise. But God can satisfy the hunger. Another one is this one sa verse 5. The barren woman gives birth to seven. So, Aside from Samuel, nagkaroon pa rin ng ibang anak si Hannah. So hindi naman siya uh, necessary seven. It signifies that out of the seven days of the week, parang in, uh, sinimbo, si, uh, symbolizes yung completeness ng kanyang longing. So it means God can entrust children. Raising from the dead in verse 6. Another thing is this, God can give life as He is the source of life. The Lord brings death and gives life. So God can intervene even when the time uh, of Jesus, when Lazarus died, God can uh, give life to Lazarus again. Just to, uh, di ba yung compassion uh, na nakita niya sa mga tao? When, the, when people were crying out, sila Martha, Mary, so Jesus had compassion, He wept. So, nakakaramdam siya sa atin. So, kayang buhay hindi ng Panginoon. But one thing is for certain, we may not be successful in having another life here on earth, but for sure, meron tayong buhay sa langit. Another one that God can, can do dito sa ating mundo is this, elevating the poor. So, verse 7 and 8, ang sabi dito, the Lord, uh, the Lord, Sends poverty and wealth, he humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. God can provide earthly resources. May mga pagkakataon, alam ko meron tayo mga testimonies kanya-kanya na hindi mo alam kung saan ang galing. Pero napo-provide. Minsan, uh, as a human being, parang kinakabahan tayo pagka merong need, kinakabahan tayo na wala tayong nakikitang pera. Pero pagka uh, hindi tayo nag-expect, tapos may dumating na blessing, iba ang kaligayahan natin, tama? Yung mga unexpected blessing, sa totoo lang, yun yung mas nakakabigay, nag, nag, papa, nagbibigay ng kaligayahan sa atin. Yung mga inexpect mo na, ay may gastusin, tingnan na yung pera sa bangko, ah, okay pa. Thank you, Lord. Pero iba yung, Lord, talagang wala. Tapos biglang may dumating. Diba, iba ang kaligayahan na ganun. So, this is how the Lord works and intervenes in the life of men. And last is verse 8. No, uh, God can lift up uh, the lowly. Ang sabi dito sa last line, uh, bestows on them a throne of honor. God raised the lowly people. 
So God, as long as you are humble, God can lift you up in any ways and means. Hannah did all these things, experienced all these things. That's why she thanked the Lord for it. Ibig sabihin, he, she felt that the Lord uh, was working alongside her. All of this refers to the principle that the final disposition of all things in the, is in the mighty hands of the Lord. He who created the world was able to cause Hannah to triumph. Meaning, God is sovereign and became Hannah's source of victory out from nothing. When we can see here that God has His own doing according to His own liking. Again, puntahan natin doon sa, sa question number 11 ng Westminster Shorter Catechism. The question is this, what are God's works of providence? God's works of providence are His most holy, wise, and powerful preserving and governing all His creatures and all their actions. It means, according to Dr. James Kennedy, God has the prerogative of authority over every action and though because that is how He established the universe to function. The difference between us na tayo ang gumagawa and between God na gumagawa is that we are made for His own uh, for His ownership. While He has a perfect freedom to act in concert with His will. Kaya ang sabi ng Isaiah 46.10, I will do all my good pleasures. Thus relates God, God's ultimate claim that I will do as I please. Kahit hindi pabor sa atin ang sitwasyon, kung ito ay kalooban ng Panginoon, wala, wala, wala tayong magagawa. Only to look at the situation, who God is, what character God was displayed on my situation. Kasi wala tayong magagawa. Lahat ng buhay natin nasa kamay ng Diyos. If He extends our life, He extends our life. If not, then we receive the glory from the Lord to heaven. If we receive this, then this is how God will be glorified in our lives. If the, eto lang, yan lang. Wala tayong magagawa no matter how we effort ourselves in pushing ourselves to achieve something. Kung hindi yan ang kalooban ng Panginoon, hindi yan ang kalooban ng Panginoon. So ibig sabihin, when Hannah was praying, was having this discourse in her life, she trusted God's sovereignty. Kasi wala siyang magagawa. Kahit hindi pabor sa atin, Kung yun ang kalooban ng Panginoon, walang wala tayong magagawa because God is in control of everything. He alone can make that statement without fear of contradiction. In our passage shows that our lives are in the mighty hands of God and He worked on it according to His pleasure that gives glory to Him. Sa kadalasan ng buhay natin, hindi natin maintindihan nga, nga, bakit. Pero di ba in the long run, masasabi natin, ah, kaya pala, Lord. Di ba? Kaysa sa pinipilit natin yung isang sitwasyon, tapos na-achieve natin, pero merong regret sa dulo, ay, sayang naman, Lord. Kaya sana pala hindi ko ginawa, sana pala hindi ko pinilit. Kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng regret. Kaysa sa i-allow natin ang kung paano mag-work si God, and then only then we can realize uh, we, we realize na, ah, kaya pala, Lord. Sana mas marami tayong realizations na, ah, kaya pala, Lord, hindi mo inalaw. I had this one ninong and ninang sa wedding, and then, wala silang anak. So, nagtry sila uh, for several years, uh, mga, mga doctors, ganyan-ganyan, tapos wala talaga. So, disturbed, discouraged, ganyan. Kasi gusto nila magkaanak. Then one incident, the wife, yung si ano, uh, yung ninang namin, nagkaroon ng polyps sa kanyang ano, sa kanyang ovary. Which nung nakita na, talagang kailangang tanggalin lahat. Yung ovary, fallopian tube, lahat na ano kasi nag ano na kumalat na doon. And then kailangan abunuhan ng dugo. And good thing, yung husband pareho sila ng dugo AB positive. So, kuha ng dugo, test ganyan. Tapos, alam niyo kung ano sabi ng kanyang OB? Sabi niya, buti na lang hindi niyo pinilit na magkaroon ng anak. Uh, 
sa biochemistry, your blood are, is not compatible. Kung magkakaroon man kayo ng anak, magkakaroon ng diferensya. Which will hinder them in moving and going out and uh, sa kanilang ministry ngayon na palagi silang umaalis. Doon na sabi niya, ah, kaya pala Lord. Kasi minsan may mga bagay na kung gusto nating ipilit because we can only see the limitations that we have in front of us but God can see what's ahead. We cannot question the detours and the stopover that the Lord has given us because there is purpose in it. Meron kami experience na nakaplano na, kailangan pumunta doon sa community. Pero sobrang lakas ng ulan, hindi kami natuloy. Lord, paano kami makakaminister dito? Paano itong mga dala namin na para doon sa community? Ganyan-ganyan. So wala, uwi kami kasi sobrang lakas. Only then na nalaman namin doon sa area kasi walang ulan. Yung pala nagkagyera. Kung nandoon kami by that time, baka kasama kami doon sa crossfire. So, doon pa lang namin masasabi na, ah, kaya pala Lord. So, sometimes the detours, we may feel pain, na, ay, Lord, bakit? Ganyan. Pero, when we fully understood the sovereignty of God, that we are in the, palms of, uh, in the palm of His hands, we can only say, kaya pala Lord, when time comes and the Lord will reveal to us the very purpose of that moment. So the principle that I would like to leave us here is this. God is sovereign over all. No human factor can manipulate God's action to persuade Him. But according to His own desire, He wills what He wills. We may question the Lord why. But we can only receive an answer from the Lord that that is His will. If it is His will, no more questions added. Number four. When Hannah was threatened, God was her refuge. In verses 8, 10, uh, 8b to 10, For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's, and upon them He has set the world. He guards the steps of his faithful ones, but the wicked perish in darkness. For by his own strength shall no man prevail. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder from heaven against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth and will give power to his king. He will exalt the horn of his anointed. Here means that Hannah, Hannah's security is with God. That even if she was under threat, she trusted God over security. She believed on the sovereignty and the omnipresent nature of God that the Lord is her refuge and his, uh, her tower. Ang sabi ng Panginoon dito, for the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Hannah knows that her security, kahit nandito siya sa mundong ibabaw, it is of the Lord and she is with the Lord. And he guards the steps of His faithful ones. As long as you are faithful, God will guard your every steps. As long as you are faithful. Minsan kasi, we, we wanted to do our own steps and ask God to help us in our own steps. Diba yung gusto natin, yun yung masusunod. Tapos kung nagkaroon tayo ng problema, tsaka tayo ihingi ng tulong sa Panginoon. Pero dapat ang makikita natin, as long as we are faithful, we are secured in the Lord because He will guide, guide and guard our steps. In addition to stating that the Lord blesses His saints but brings the wicked to destruction, kasi yun yung sabi sa verse 9, but the wicked perish in dark for by His own strength shall no man prevail. Hannah closed her poem, her prayer, with a prophetic announcement that the Lord will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Etong word, uh, king, okay, uh, is anointed, is a translation of Messiah or the Messiah. Though it may be unwarranted to make a direct connection between Hannah's prophecy and Jesus, the Messiah, it is evident that, that the juxtaposition of king an anointed one points to the royal nature of the anointed one whom God uh, would raise up. 
wala namang ibang pinag-uusapan dito. It, it, it doesn't refer to, to Samuel na, and will give power to his king. He will exalt the horn of his anointed. Hindi rin naman ito nagre-refer kay David. But definitely, it will refer to our Lord Jesus Christ who will stand as the king and the anointed one for his believers. This points out that the ultimate security of every believer is our Lord Jesus Christ. Siguro, you have heard about Joy Spring and Will Dasovich na interview, naging trending. And grabe hangang-hanga ako kay Joyce, how she, she stood her ground of her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the message was clearly uh, displayed. Kasi sino dito ang nakapanood doon sa interview? And very powerful. Ang question lang doon, uh, kung, ang, uh, kung ang non-believer ba uh, will have a chance to go to heaven. So clear yun ni Joyce. When you say non-believer, meaning hindi naniniwala kay Jesus Christ, yes. Ang sabi niya, definitely, no. So sabi niya, kahit yung mga ATS, kahit yung mga mababait, na walang mga ginawang mali, hindi sila makakapasok sa Panginoon, napaka-unfair ng God. Hindi man lang niya binigyan ng second chance na para magkaroon ng pwedeng, pu- pu- pwedeng pumasok sa langit. And this statement na ginawa ni Joy Spring, uh, Joy Spring ang gusto ko, ang sabi niya, I wish I could give an alternative answer, a different answer. Pero wala na talagang ibang sagot. As long as you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can understand the, the holy nature of God and the uh, nature of God being just, that only Jesus Christ can satisfy that judgment. Kung hindi ka uh, napunta doon, kung wala ka doon sa faith na yon, sa sphere of faith na yon, hindi ka talaga makapasok sa langit. And she was bashed. Sabi ko nga, sana ako na lang nabash. Kasi kaya niyang panindigan yon and grabe. Nope, TV personality siya, vlogger siya, influencer, pero she stood her ground. The, hindi niya piniplease yung mga tao. Okay lang. After two days, nagbigay siya ng statement, ganun pa rin. Wala siyang pakialam kasi yun yung kanyang pananampalataya. So when we are under threat, our security is in our Lord Jesus Christ. So the principle that I would like to leave here is this. If we are of the Lord, there is nothing to worry. If we are of the Lord, there is nothing to worry. Since the foundation of the world, God knows what will happen to us and to His people. The mere fact that God called us and knew us intimately is already an assurance that we are secured in Him no matter the physical aspect factors us in. Kasi kahit anong mangyayari sa atin, our ultimate life towards heaven, is yun yung security natin that we are with God and that God is with us. Again, despite sa hindi favorable sa atin ang situation, ganun kay Hannah, she just trusted the Lord. And the Lord provided everything what she needed. And the Lord provided everything at the right time. No regrets kay Hannah, but she claimed, kaya pala. So I hope, as we continue to, to tra- traverse doon sa uh, dark tunnel, or if you are inside the cave with no boundaries, trust that God is sovereign and He will lead us towards victory. In our own struggles, in all aspects of our life, let us, number one, trust the sovereignty of God by not worrying after we lift our concerns in prayer. As long as we pray to God, we pray to God, hayaan na natin ang Panginoon. Because God hears them. Number two, let us hope in God that even if we cannot achieve victory in our lifetime, to be with the Lord is already a victory. Out of seven billion people in the world, not everyone has a personal relationship with God. Kukunti lang. Now, if you feel that you are part of that small group of people who has a personal relationship with the Lord, enjoy that relationship. Number three, 
Be an encouragement to others in all ways and forms, for we do not know their own personal battles, but pray with them so they will have hope in God too. Try to become an encouragement. No? Kumustahin. Uh, tap their shoulders. Hug them. Although, pandemic pa ngayon, bawal-bawal mo na maghag. But again, by having a personal touch, you will somehow encourage them. And lastly, let us ask prayer concerns to our friends and family so we can pray for them and they too will trust God for their victories. Try in your offices, no? Kumustahin mo yung kasama mo. Tapos hingan mo lang siya ng prayer request. Tapos ipag-pray mo lang. Hindi mo alam kung ano ang lalim ng pinagdadaanan. And you will become a blessing. Subukan lang, no? Kumusta? Anong pwede ko ipag-pray sa'yo? Magugulat yan sila. Ha? Bakit? Anong ano? Ay, wala lang. Kasi may, may prayer time ako ngayon. Gusto ko lang ipag-pray. Eh, nakita kita. Gusto kong ipag-pray kung ano mga concerns mo. You can be an encouragement with that. Kasi the same, when Hannah plead to the Lord, we can plead to God also. And God can work in that manner. Kung paano tayo, kung paano niya tutugunan niyan lahat. So, we hope and pray that as long as we trust God, we trust for the victory. We hope and we know that God loved us. So in here, as we are journeying sa ating mga buhay, the song, uh, Jesus Be the Center of It All, could be a, minis, uh, a prayer that whatever happens to us, God is with us. So you can see it, you can ponder on the lyrics of the song, and we can trust God that in every situation we have, let God be the center, let Jesus be the center as we sing this song.
Yes, Lord, even the creation of the world. It's not about us, but it's all about and for our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we are here with many concerns in life, be it with finances, health, direction, protection, mental and emotional health. Panginoon, nawa marinig nyo ang aming hinaing at nawa turuan nyo kami, Panginoon, that we can only and only pray to you. No matter how we strive hard, it is you, Lord God, who is at work of everything. May we completely trust on your sovereign will in our lives, Lord. And we can only seek and plead to you that we may have a favorable results in all our endeavors. In all things, Lord God, if it is unfavorable to us, I pray that our heart trust on the answers, on the stopovers, on the detours, of our prayers and only then we can say kaya pala Lord rather than pushing things and we will have regrets later thank you Lord God for being available anytime anywhere where we can plea where we can pour out our hearts to you and to you alone this we ask and pray through Jesus Christ the center of it all Amen and I'm in.